Hello, welcome, welcome back. I think it's time for me to do another video where I show you something that caught my eye but in a very informal, unstructured, unscripted, easygoing way. So today I am going to do a bit of a Zoom style recorded at home video and I'm going to read to you a children's book. This caught my eye and I thought it would be interesting to look at it and share it with you all. It is a children's book titled Why Only the Girls. It is clearly a book with a boy unhappy that the girls have certain privileges and I am assuming that this is a book about the boys education. Now you might have heard about the boys' education. I've covered quite a bit of it on my YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna go into it here uh, extensively. I'm just going to say it's been in the news a lot that Hasidic boys get a very different education than girls. They get a lot of Torah and Talmud learning and very little secular education. And uh, this has been very controversial. Probably the one thing that most people who I interact with know about the Hasidic community is about the boys' education and the way outsiders frame it is only the girls get an education, that the boys don't learn anything. Well, the truth is that the boys learn a lot. They learn a lot of religious subjects. They learn the Torah and the Talmud. And because that is so much prioritized, uh, it often comes at the expense of secular education. And I've covered this extensively with interviews from uh, Ellie Spitzer, who's a headmaster of a Hasidic school, to Jerry Alborelli, who was an English teacher, secular subjects teacher in a Satmar school, to, to former students of the uh, Hasidic school system, including myself, uh, having gone to the girls' school. But I think looking at a children's book where clearly some issues with the school system are explored will add another dimension to the story. So let's have a look it is in yiddish so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna read it from the yiddish translating on the fly please bear with me uh and i am going to scan in the pages afterwards and add them in so there's a forward and this is page one my name is nasi and i am in third grade i wanted to share with you something that gets me really really upset the day sunday surely you are wondering what it is to be upset about a day in the week can a day hurt you upset you? So, you should know that here in America, and probably in more places in the world where there is a tendency that the girls don't go in school on sen Sunday, the day can get very upsetting to a boy like me. You tell me, is it fair that the girls can sleep until in the middle of the day when us, the boys, have to wake up early in the morning to go and learn? So the boys are getting up going to school six days a week, including on Sunday. Uh, while many girls don't go to school, although uh, I see the Satmar High School students go to school for half a day on Sunday until noon because they don't go to school at all on Friday. So the girls still have a five day school week, uh, but for the high schoolers and I believe some middle schoolers, the day is transferred from Friday to Sunday so they, they can be in, at home on Friday helping. One day, Sunday, Understandably, I came home from Haider especially upset. Maybe because I've been holding in all of my complaints for so long and it suddenly started to explode out of me. Or maybe because it was summer and summer, the Shabbos ends really late because Shabbos ends at sundown and in the summer sundown is really late. And I went to sleep especially late and my fatigue really caused me to explode. So I yelled out, ah! Oh, Look at these girls. They always, only the girls have fun. Why do we have to go to Cheder on Sunday? Cheder is the name for the Hasidic boys school up to age 13-ish. I didn't realize if my mother was answering me or not because right away my sister Dini started to say that I'm, I'm saying silly things. Um, that, that, that I'm mistaken that it is so much fun at home. It is often boring. We don't do anything special. And besides that, she added, all the boys have a lot more fun. And here she started to list all the contests and tests and end of study celebrations and events and ceremonies and, and treat throwing ceremonies that we the boys have. I didn't want to hear what she had to say. I left the kitchen and I started to lay out a fantastic speech of what I would answer her. She really, really, really wasn't right. 
she only wanted me to stop with my complaints, so that's why she said that the boys are having a blast. But she won't succeed. Also, I will list all the joys and trips and parties and Shabbos parties and Nash and gifts and beginning of month programs that she has. And this is besides for the free Sundays when I were sitting in and studying in Cheder and she leisurely spent it at home. I'm not even talking about that. And so I was upset and aggrieved and added more and more of my complaints to the list until the list became three times longer than the few good things that boys have. Shimmy, my older brother, came home later from Chayde and he tried to convince me. All oh, those poor girls, we study the Torah. Every minute that we study, we have a mitzvah. But them, they, they learn just a few holy things. They learn a lot more English. We come home and we are free. They have a lot of homework and tests. So what? They don't go to school on Sunday. But I told him that for a whole day of vacation, every single week, then I'm even willing that my Rebbe should add, that my teacher should add homework. And what's with all the other pleasures that they have that we don't have? It's not fair. After dinner, when the little ones were already asleep, uh, my mother called me and she wanted to talk to me. I see that Sunday is a very difficult day for you. For sure, I said. Uh, and I again started to list all the things that make me angry that only that the girls who don't go to school when we have to rush out uh, early to Cheder uh, after such a late end of Shabbos and I don't have any of the fun. My mother listened to all of my complaints without telling me if I'm right or not. And when I finished listing all my complaints, she said, I understand you very well, Nusi. It is really difficult to feel that the girls who don't study the Torah get earn a free day for themselves at home. You feel like it is not fair. I nodded and this was exactly how I felt. Now I will tell you what is my difficulty, my mother said. It is hard for me when you are so angry and full of complaints, so we have to think of a solution that is appropriate for the both of us. Come, let's think together. My mother brought a pen and paper and she asked, do you have a solution? I should change with the girls. This was the first thing that I said. I thought that my mother would laugh or say that uh, she thinks that these are silly things, but she smiled and she wrote down my words on the page. Do you have another idea? She asked. This time I thought a little and I said, that I should also stay home on Sunday and not go in Cheder. My mother silently wrote my second idea and she waited. I thought a little more and I said that the girls shouldn't have anything to do while I am a Cheder. I felt that I was saying silly weird things but my mother wrote everything down. I tried to think of more examples of more things if they want to do something that is fun, then they would have to wait until the boys come home. My mother wrote this and she listened. I tried to continue to think, but nothing came to mind anymore. And so my mother said, I also have an idea. How about every Sunday when you go to Cheder, you'll, become, you, you'll get a special little treat, a goodie, a nash. I smiled, I thought a little bit, and I said, but also my brother, Shimmy. Now my mother was really smiling and she said, you're my nachas boy, you're my pride and joy. She took the list in her hand and she said, now we will pick between all of the ideas we came up with, the solution that is the most appropriate for everyone. The first solution is not possible, she said. You can't change with the girls. And the second, also not, because you can't miss one day of school every week. Afterwards, I added, and I also don't want it. I will lose too many mitzvahs from the opportunity to learn the Torah. What about the third idea that the girls shouldn't do anything? 
I thought about it, and then I, I said no. Oh, those poor girls, why are they at fault? They don't have to sit and klutz and do nothing until I come home. My mother told me that I'm talking like a really mature boy. What was left were two options, that they should leave all the fun until the boys come home, which was my idea, and the one that my mother suggested, that the boys should get a nash every Sunday when they go to Cheder. The last one is the best idea, I said, because it will give me an excitement to wake up in the morning, even if I'm tired. The days ran by, and after and another Shabbos came and went. Sunday came around. A difficult, tired Sunday, just like every week, but I discovered that it was a lot easier to jump out of bed and to get dressed really quickly, even while in the girls' room it was a sight full of sleeping faces as the girls were celebrating their weekly vacation day. In the kitchen, my mother waited with a nash, which was left over from Shabbos, and I ran a chayder full of joy to learn the Torah, which is better than every nash in the whole world. It really was better. Just that Sunday, the teacher said that we're going to have a Mishnayis contest, which is a, uh, one of the, the texts that the boys study, part of the Torah study umbrella, full of very special drawings and gifts. It's been a long time since we had studied on a Sunday with so much joy. Another week went by, another Shabbos came and went, and again, uh, Sunday came, a difficult, tired Sunday, just like every week. But at recess, I went outside with my nash that my mother gave me and um, that she pushed into my bag before I ran to the bus. And the good taste that um, had overcome my, my tiredness. When I saw my friend Harishi was looking at it, without thinking, I gave him some and together... Uh, we afterwards went out in the yard and we saw, and I saw that Hershey was a really good and smart boy. And together uh, we followed, we watched a sweet little ladybug. And when the bell rang at the end of recess, I knew that I now had a new friend. Another week went by, another Shabbos came and went. And again, Sunday came, a difficult, tired Sunday. It wasn't tired anymore. It wasn't so hard anymore. Uh, and I hardly felt the fatigue. Worst, I will go to sleep early today, I told, I said to myself, grabbing the Reese's. Um, and naturally, the Sunday nash that my mother gave me, I did not forget. In Chaydet at Reese's, I and Hershey watched a big truck that pour cement um, for the new house that was being built outside across the street. It was so interesting to watch and to chat with my new friend with whom I have become close only just one Sunday ago that I completely forgot that it is Sunday and I have to sit in Chaydet when the girls are having a blast at home. And I completely forgot about my Sunday nash. It was, it left, it was left in my bag. Only going home did I remember that I didn't even eat it yet. And that my mother gives it to me to sweeten a little the difficulty that I have with Sundays. Hey, but it's not even difficult anymore. Just the opposite. Should I tell my mother? Should I not? In the end, I told her everything about the first Sunday when my teacher started the lively uh, contest test, about the second Sunday when I found a new, fr when I made a new friend, uh, who is now um, a friend to today, the the third and pleasant Sunday that went by in Chayder. My mother was very happy to hear this, and she even said a thank you for making her heart light, because a mother wants for her children to always be joyous, is what she explained to me. So I told her a little bit that I didn't even eat yet my Sunday nash because first of all, I forgot. And second of all, second of all what, my mother asked. Second of all, I, was, I didn't know if I was allowed to because you give it to me so that I can get through the Sunday, Echaide, and it's been so wonderful that maybe I don't deserve the nash anymore. My mother laughed and she said, you're a sweet child, Nussi. 
I think that today you actually deserve two nush. One, the Sunday nush, and the second, because you made me joyful. From then on, a lot of weeks went by, many Sundays went by, and today I don't even understand how I was ever jealous of my sisters on their little sleep on their free day when God gave me, thankfully, the the great gift to learn the Torah, which is better than all the vacations and sweeter than all the nash. But after all, my mother doesn't want to stop giving me the special Sunday nash. She says that she also wants a small bit of the mitzvah, of the, of the good deed of the study of my Torah. But I think that she has not just a small part, but a big part. Because with her good idea, she helped me in the problem that I had and that bothered me so much. The solution is one that I use often when I have a problem. Not always does my mother have the time to do it with me, and then I take a pen and paper, I write down all sorts of solutions that come to mind, even weird solutions, and then I look around and I, I find the appropriate one. And I see every single time that with, Scott, with God's help, you can always find, try to find a solution that is appropriate for everyone. The end. Pretty interesting, um, especially what strikes me is the way the boy, the older brother Shemi, describes the girls' education as minimal. Boys are the ones who are going to school and learning, the girls are klutzing, they're doing nothing. So the way this is framed is not that the gr girls are the ones getting an education, but rather the girls are having fun and the boys are the ones who are learning very difficult, rigorous studies and are therefore feeling tired out, um, which is of course the way um, it is framed uh, internally in this world. It is also really interesting to see the way this book is introducing parents and children to problem-solving solutions, to ways of dealing with life's difficulties. So this is about so much more than education. This is about parenting. This is about mothers um, showing children how to handle difficulties in life in a way that seems to me very infused by modern therapy ideas, listening non-judgmentally to the child and letting leading the child to figure out the solutions on their own instead of the mother judging and giving solutions that is very, very much um, influenced by, by the therapy culture from uh, outside of the community. Uh, and, and in general, I think, um, it's an interesting perspective on on the challenges that it is to be a boy in this community and the kind of complaints that uh, it can give rise to. And I wonder to which degree the number of Hasidic men and ex-Hasidic men who speak to the difficulty of their education are actually speaking to a part of this, what is what is articulated in this book, which is not so much about the not being able to speak English and not being able to do arithmetic and all that, but rather about having gone through childhood feeling like they are missing out on childhood while the girls get to enjoy their childhoods. So all of these are foods for thought, but I just read it for the first time. So I've got, um, I guess I got to process it a little bit. Um, and I'd love to do so with all of you. So please share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, let me hear how you, um, what you're reading, what you hear, and, um, we'll discuss it further more over there. Okay. I'll see you all around. Bye now.